Welcome to the BC Perspective Podcast. This is episode 312, recorded on, boy, it's August 6, 2014 already. Where has the summer gone, Jeremy? I don't know. I didn't realize it was August until it sort of slapped me in the face. Do you even have summer up in Vancouver, or is it just kind of cool there? Well, it's freaking warm right now, but not compared to what you're getting in Texas, Maury. You, you're not getting a summer, are you, Josh? You're going to no, get I think one day it's, towards it's, it's stayed, September? It stayed in the lower 70s pretty much this entire summer in rain, which and is kind of strange. Rain yeah. must be nice. That must be a nice thing. It is. Uh, you know what? We record this damn thing every week, sometimes even without Ryan, the people, the person who typically pays us, at least he pays Ken, or at least keeps him around and says nice things about him. I'm not even sure about the nice things. But anyway, uh, you can uh, ask questions to us. You can email us at podcast at pcper.com. You can uh, find this every week at pcper.com slash podcast. You can follow Ryan at twitter.com slash Ryan Shroud or twitter.com slash pcper. Uh, something that we always like to uh, say is, hey, Ken, did you send out the spam? Did you notify you everybody? Uh, no. No, Ken. But anyway, uh, if, if Ken is actually on the ball, you would get a message saying the PC Per podcast is on. And Ryan may not be in attendance, but we're sure running it. And it's going to be a lot of fun, especially with Ken juggling three computers now at the same time. If you want to join this uh, said list, then just go to PCPer.com slash subscribe. You will get updates on everything that is going on. We promise not to give it to Maury and uh, his dating site that he's trying to open. How's that going, by the way, Maury? It's not. Well, it's since failed. we're not feeding him emails. Yeah. yeah. And why is he yelling? No. Who's yelling? He's just having an identity crisis. It's fine. Yeah. Damn it. Anyway, well, Texas, uh, one other I mean, piece of sense. news, unless somebody else has something to say. That's the only time well, like about it. the VLAN, maybe? Yeah, sure. Well, we can talk about the VLAN uh, this coming Saturday. Well, the PC per fragging fa frogs. Tell us about it, Jeremy. <laughs> fragging frogs. Well, this this is going to be the seventh fragging frog contest with uh, what a mascot someone has pointed out they think looks like you for some strange reason. Me? But uh, yeah, I don't oh, quite see the resemblance. Yeah. But we've done this seven times now over the past couple of years. Uh, we almost always have a rep from AMD drop by where Sam is busy doing things. So at AMD underscore Roy and just bug the hell out of him until he shows up because he's another AMD rep that uh, doesn't completely hate us yet. Uh, this time we're doing something a little different in that we're keeping the prizes secret. So you've got us post to a thread, which I've linked to in that post, and which is in the Fragging Frogs uh, forum, to sort of say that you are going to show up, and also you're going to have to show up. It's it's a two-step process here. It gives you a list of what the games we're probably going to play, which will be many and varied. It starts at 10 a.m. Eastern, goes until early the next day. If you're in North America, we have some people that are coming in from Iceland, from Norway, that for them, it's it's about eight in the morning and they started at about midnight if you're curious if it's going to be worth it for showing up because you know you, you just don't like gaming for some strange reason you're wondering what kind of prizes well the last one we gave away just over two dozen fx 8350s uh 7990 a whole bunch of never settle forever silver game codes and epic swag a lot of it signed by tim sweeney so if none of that sounds interesting, then don't even bother showing up. But for the vast majority of you who just sort of went, ooh, really? I'll see you there. It will be fun, and I highly recommend it. Very nice. Uh, I might even join up. I think I have kind of that day off. Kind of, except for that whole video card and motherboard testing regime that I have to go through. Sure. Benchmarking. Benchmarking. It's not playing wife. It's benchmarking. I used to be able to get away with that one. Used to be until she actually watched me benchmark once. And she's like, no, you're not, you're not actually benchmarking that Skyrim. You've been playing it for three hours. That's not... You never to be fair, three you guys. hours is not a long time for Skyrim. 
No, it's it's probably not. Uh, you know, the week was a little slow. Part of that is my fault. I kind of missed an NDA. I actually have that uh, written and uploaded, and it'll probably be here mm, tomorrow, and that's going to be that new AMD APU release. Uh, you'll want to check back and take a look and see how it performed. Actually, they performed. There were two APUs that we were given, and uh, I spent some ungodly amount of hours benchmarking those two plus three others in multiple configurations, and... Uh, yeah, that took up a lot of time. I don't have a benchmark monkey like Ryan does. Ken, My name you know is bench- Ken. What? My name is Ken. Thank you very much. The benchmark. Wait, I thought you had a sub monkey that you went to now. Does Matt not show up anymore? Uh, his duties have been relieved, mostly. Oh, oh. I see. Well, he's, he's got two children now, so yeah. he can't really benchmark like the wind. A whole lot of free time, right? Oh, uh, yeah, I've got, yeah. Hey, if you want to bore a baby to sleep, just run benchmarks in front of it for hours. It might work. It might. Just turn the volume way down. Because that whole Battlefield 3, next thing you know, your baby's going to be saying, quit being such a hippie, (laughs) Montez. So, (laughs) on to the reviews. Uh, Sebastian, correct? Fika Snacks? It's Sebastian's true. been writing a couple. It is Sebastian, right? Yep. Okay. He's been writing a couple of nice reviews for us lately. The man has a knack for photography, and he apparently does all of his shopping at IKEA. And he has a lot of retro things, too, as well as some nice things as well. But anyway, he wrote about the N2560 Dual Bay NAS. It's a budget HTPC option. Apparently, this is a, again, like it said, Dual Bay NAS. It's powered by an Atom processor. It's got an HDMI port coming out there, and uh, it's got the ability to do what? What is that? WXMA, Jeremy? Uh, is, is it that or is it no? It's XMBC. Okay, XMBC. You know what? There's too many acronyms. There is, isn't there? One. But yeah, it, XMBC software is. You know, if you're not looking to build your own HTPC and you want something that's purely set up as an HTPC, as an OS. And with this particular one, you follow a little bit of the idiosyncrasies that he found as he was doing this. It's a very quick and easy way to, boom, get up and running with almost no effort whatsoever, which for a lot of people, that's what you want. So the problem that they ha- that uh, Sebastian had was that you have to update the N2560's OS to the newest version. It's a Thekus OS. It's a custom-built uh, Linux. And then you install XMBC. If you don't do it that way, XMBC is no longer compatible with it, and it leads to a bit of headache, but it can be recovered from. So at least you've got that going. But apart from that, he said, boom, he hooked up his display via HDMI, keyboard and mouse directly up to the NAS, because it does come with two USB ports, which some of these devices don't tend to do. And within minutes was running directly off that Marantz uh, DAC. He had no problems with 1080p video. Um, as a couple of people were asking, they wanted like the full-on H.264 10-bit. It's not really advertised to do that. It might be able to. We didn't really play with it. Uh, but as far as what it goes, it's a relatively cheap shell. Um, he chose to put a pair of Western Digital one terabyte or sorry four terabyte Reds in it. So it can hold, you know, a movie or two for you. And mm-hmm. overall, he was just really impressed with how easy it was, uh, you know, apart from the one little caveat, to get it going. And just frankly, that it's so small and uh, clean. Uh, as you can see when he's got it beside the component, it's not even quite console size. If you look inside, it's, you know, the size of three three-and-a-half-inch hard drives. It's a tiny little thing with the SATA interface. So overall, and, oh, sorry, and it's powered on uh, an Atom C5335. Yeah, so don't expect to be gaming on it. Don't expect super impressive performance for anything but playback. But for audio and video, he really sort of liked this thing. And there is an app store, uh, a lot of the Thekas apps do work on this and they've got their own sort of app store going so if you're looking for something that's super easy to set up 
you've got a couple of hard drives or you can afford a couple of hard drives and you've got 180 bucks in your pocket, or at least as it was when he wrote it, uh, doing a quick check on Amazon, it's 180 bucks. So there you go. <laughs> it's, it's quick and easy, and boom, you've got an HTPC that's kind of stylish and will look good next to your Marantz if you can afford one of those. Yeah, also, if you're looking for the uh, software that uh, they're talking about, um, it was originally called XBMC, Xbox Media Center, but uh, they apparently renamed themselves within the last week to Kodi, K-O-D-I. Interesting, Kodi. Hmm. No. Uh, performance it, on this thing in, in actual... Anymore, right? Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead, Jeremy. I was just going to make a crack about the Expo and them not wanting to have anything to do with it whatsoever again. Well, it was... Yeah. Um, um, it was originally for the uh, original Xbox. Um, I believe it never actually shipped on any Xbox besides the original Xbox. Oh. Uh, the 360 came and they're like, yeah, let's go to PCs. <laughs> <laughs> Don't blame them. Very nice. Um, you know, it, it kind of stinks that nobody's at the control center because all these guys from the other satellite offices just keep talking over each other and we don't know we're doing it. So we apologize for that. Uh, we don't have the uh, stop sign clown in the office whose name yes, is Ryan. Yes, we apologize Ryan. for talking over each other. Exa- exa- just like that. Right. Anyway, uh, performance of this in terms of actual NAS was getting, what, about 110 megabytes per second uh, reads, which over Giggy is not too shabby. Obviously, this is not a wireless group. You're going to say something, Jeremy? No, uh, just, man, it's decent speed. It's not wonderful. Well, what is the what is the theoretical of Giggy? It's 125 megabyte per second, right? True. Yeah, so I mean, it's it's getting pretty close, and I think you're. I'm you're just looking. Spinning. Did he do a raid? He must well, have done a raid. Well, it's just mirrored, right? Like, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So I mean, that's. I mean, they're pretty much pegging it out theoretically in terms of reads. In terms of writes, a little bit slower. It's 104, 105. Megabytes per second again, not bad, uh, but again, you're you're being held back by that whole gigabit Ethernet, for the most part. That and uh, you know the Reds are not the speediest drives out there. They're just pretty reliable. So, uh, next one, Ryan. Before he left, well, yeah, before he left, he was able to write this puppy up. It's the Asus Strix GTX 780 6 gigabyte video card review. Near silent gaming at your fingertips. Now, a couple of weeks ago, Asus uh, decided to release this new Strix product. And uh, apparently it's going to be a new lineup because there's already a GTX 760 version out. But if you notice a few things about this one. One, it's again an overbuilt card. It's got more power phases than you can count or throw a stick at. I mean, you actually can count them, but anyway, you don't want to. Uh, it's got two high-efficiency fans. It's got a very efficient heat sink. And uh, at certain amounts of power, those fans won't even run. So it may get up into the 70s and whatever, and those fans are just going to sit there. Once the temperature goes up a little bit more, they'll start spinning fairly slowly. So for the, a lot of the time of just basic uh, desktop use, some lower-end games and whatnot, those fans aren't even going to be spinning. Uh, it's when you start getting into the heavier games, Battlefields, Unreal Crisis 2004. 3. What's that? Unreal Tournament 2004. Petro <laughs> Last yes. Light. Because he did actually do it. And yeah, it did oh. start to spin. It hit about 65 Celsius. Yeah, yeah. Well... That one does kind of heat your card up anyway. I can't imagine why. <laughs> it's, like, it's like World of Warcraft. You start that up and your damn fans just start spinning out of control. And you're like, what's wrong with you, Blizzard? Well, Have you we lapsed or is it just this memory? Something. Anyway. But uh, yeah, it's, it's also got six gigas memory. So theoretically, you can have better performance in a... Um, multi-screen setup or in 4K because you get that extra bit of space in there. Uh, performance is, is slightly overclocked. I think by about 40 to 50 megahertz overall. Um, everything else is fairly stock, but it looks like it's a nice card. And again, it's it's silent. He was able to overclock it uh, pretty effectively. I think it was like uh, 1.116 
gigahertz was the max that he got to. And uh, it stayed fairly consistent there. It did drop after a while when heat uh, built up, but it wasn't uh, anything horrific. Uh, in overall performance, it performed just right around the same level as the AMD R9 290. Now, uh, can, was this one of the reference 290s, or was this one of the better cooled 290s? Do you know? I can't imagine it was a reference 290 at this point. Who would want to use one of those? I know. Obviously, you have not gone on eBay and have decided to buy something that has been thermally choked to death by Bitcoin miners. No? You haven't? Anyway. So, yeah, they uh, compared it against uh, that and uh, the regular 780 and 3 gigahertz gigabyte versions, and it performed again uh, right at the 290 area, which was higher than a stock, 780. Is that enough numbers for y'all? I hope you're keeping up, because I'm not. Just talk, talk, talk. Uh, Scott, you've read a little bit about this review. Uh, what do you think about this card? Well, the first thing I'd like to say is that uh, the extra amount of RAM is definitely, definitely uh, appreciated. I know that uh, you can't really get much more than three gigabytes these days. It's like going to the Titan and the other level of uh, of um, uh, graphics cards, like at our price points. But uh, I, I know that in my like monitor setup I have here, it just keeps freaking out at me whenever I have two gigabytes and just you're in the middle of a game, even something as simple as war game. That's really the uh, most intensive and bam, your video, video memory has to kick you out to the desktop to tell you that. So um, yeah, that's, it's nice to have manufacturers that are like, you know what? Maybe some people would want a little bit extra Ram. Although besides that, I mean, the cooling option apparently does work if you want to put frame limiters on, but um, try and keep the, um, card temperature under 65 celsius without um without a fan is as evidenced by ut2004 kind of difficult so not quite passive and i know like, what you're was, not gonna what get was passive most, in a card like that of course not but i mean like what was the highest end passive card we can see and like what price point would they be roughly at would oh, like the geez. 750 i mean they're going to be, be like a uh, 750 ti or yeah. the uh, you know on the, on the amd side would be an r7 you know 250 I or think, 260 i think we have a passive 250 we, here yeah 250 i think i might have seen a 260 but so that's a cut in yeah. performance by about a third or yeah, three times. Oh, yeah, easily. Well, yeah, I mean, you totally gotta, support to 4K. That, <laughs> yeah, you and gotta I mean, figure that. And, and, good. Sorry, <laughs> it's that whole lag thing that we we'll deal with. You got to figure that these cards are 65 to 75 watts, and uh, the 780 and the R9 290 are sitting easy at the 200 225 area. So yeah, that's that's a significant amount of cooling that you've got to provide for. The nice part is that the, uh, I mean, most of the time you're going to be doing stuff, you're going to be doing either, you know, playing video or sitting on desktop and stuff like that. And I imagine that would have no problem keeping the uh, fans completely off. Absolutely. So I think this got, what, the Silver Award? And the main point that really dinged this card, I mean, it was good performance, uh, excellent cooling. It had the standard HDMI, DisplayPort, two DVI outputs. Um, you know, really an overbuilt card in terms of uh, power phases and, you know, the quality of the, the build. The overclocking was good, but the price, the price was pretty gnarly. For a GTX 780, it's going for 599 on Newegg. It's significantly higher than, uh, no, I think it's still what, 650 on Amazon. What? It's still 750 on Amazon too. Yeah, it's it's 699 on Newegg, 750 on Amazon. You pay for that extra memory and uh, the extra build quality, but uh, it's awful tempting just to say, you know what, I'm going to take that uh, GTX 780 that's on sale for 475, save my 
extra 135 bucks and get a 240 gig SSD that's pretty fast. Especially with the rumors that are coming up. Yes, and we can talk about those soon. So that was the major ding on this particular card. Asus, again, they they have built a nice product here. Performs well, but again, it's uh, pretty expensive for what you get. Anybody else disagree with that? Only my cat, apparently. Bad, bad kitty. So apparently last week we had an EVGA contest. Was I asleep? I must have been. Is that the Hadron one and the uh, the ma- mouse? Ken, are you awake? He didn't put the link in. Unlike you, I am. Well, <laughs> Unlike me. The, the contest link doesn't really matter because we already picked our winner. But well, yeah. it's true. Yeah, the winner is Lieutenant Good on you, Dan. Lieutenant Dan. 521, and he has been notified. So congratulations, Lieutenant Dan, 521. So we have uh, no advertiser this week, so Scott doesn't get paid. I'm not sure about Ken. I think Jeremy may actually be on retirement, and uh, the government of Canada is providing his uh, his monthly uh, stipend in lieu of PC per. Um, so we'll go into news. The first bit. Scott, you wrote about this one? Yes, I did. So I feel like I am in an echo chamber, and no echo is even coming back. So anyway, the uh, NVIDIA yeah. GeForce GTX. I ever, yeah, sorry. Um, yeah, so I did write about this one. <laughs> Just juggling mute. Um Basically, what happened is we were talking last week about um, rumors that uh, the GTX uh, 880 and possibly 870 would be coming around uh, October, November time frame at 28 nanometers. Uh, Turns out that might have actually been a little bit generous, and uh, it's looking like it's going to be uh, announced mid-September, available to some extent uh, later in the month on the uh, Maxwell architecture. Interesting uh, note, though, is that it also has uh, supposedly going to have four gigabytes of memory with an eight gigabyte option uh, possible as well. Um, some people expect it. It's not uh, as it's not as firm of a rumor as it coming in late September, but uh, that's going to be a lot of video memory, which would be nice for again people like me with multiple monitors, uh, especially if they have high resolution monitors. Could you imagine uh, someone doing like? three 1440 monitors and another monitor hanging off his side as as a uh, as an extra one just for the sake of it well that would be pretty pretty deadly on like two or three gigabytes especially with games coming up as they are uh so it's nice that they have more video memory again i'm gonna be hammering that home for a little bit a little bit um there's also some rumors um including some of our comments about what the actual specifications would be um again these are kind of um, lights. So I did a little bit of number crunching on it. They say it's going to be about, uh, I think, 2,560 CUDA cores with uh, uh, 1050 megahertz um, clock rate, which would end up being about 5.3 teraflops if you go by the Maxwell architecture, uh, 5.4 almost, which is about 6% more than the uh, GTX 780 Ti. So it's looking like uh, people are expecting the card to kind of uh, be just above the 1780 Ti, which is interesting because of its price point. This is what I was kind of alluding to earlier. Uh, Rumors have it um, put in between the $400 and $450 range, which when you compare against, for example, the 780 um, that we just were talking about, that's a significant price reduction for... um, about 6% performance increase over its higher-end uh, other version. So that's going to be a pretty um, pretty interesting product if it ends up yeah. being like it's supposedly going to end up at. Yeah, I mean, there, there's a lot of questions about uh, where this is going to go, and, and I haven't been 
told anything official from NVIDIA. I'm not under NDA. These are just suppositions that we've had. We know that uh, you know it's going to be Maxwell based, and uh, it it looks like it's going to be another 28 nanometer part. Now, NVIDIA has done a really good job uh, with you know the 750, 750 Ti of really controlling power and temperature, and the 750 Ti performs really much higher than what its TDP is as compared to what AMD can do. Because if you look at the difference between like a 750 Ti and the, uh, what, the R5 or is it an R7 265? I can't remember, but the 265 version, which is a significant uh, greater TDP, even though it outperforms it a little bit, that percentage increase in power consumption um, is not linear with, I guess, kind of the performance that we see. So uh, this this looks entirely probable that NVIDIA has, has jammed all that together and put it in a uh, in a package that does not need like three eight pin PCI Express uh, power connections. So uh, we're going to get an increase in performance. We're going to get better power efficiency. Um, I'm going to be kind of curious about what kind of memory bus it has because having four gigs tells you one or two things. It's either a 256 or a That's 500. Rumor. What? It rumors 256 bit. Yeah, and that would probably make sense. I mean, they may go up a little bit in speed, and uh, Maxwell does have, I believe, a little bit more internal cache than uh, Kepler does, and uh, there could be some efficiency uh, built into the system in terms of memory controllers, cache structure, and how the different components interact. So yeah, this they're 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 going to be coming out with the uh, the big first blow to the next generation of parts first. It looks like, and uh, it's going to be really interesting to see. And it and I do being have a question August sixth well. and all. What's that, Scott? I do have a question as well. Um, there's one part that I'm kind of confused about. A lot of the shortages happened uh, last time with the uh, well two times ago with the 680 uh, because they switched to a different process node. And in this case, they're going to be staying at the same one, but that's also the node that everyone and their dog is clamoring for orders about. And TSMC has like a six week ex- six week extra hold on to like what, ten or twelve weeks, I think it is. Um, so I'm wondering what you think about the availability. Do you think it's going to be something they're going to have no problem filling a warehouse with, or you think they're going to be um, just clamoring against everyone else? trying to get yeah. stock of a new design? That's a good question because we're also right on the cusp of uh, 20 nanometer parts that are coming out. Um, we also have Global Foundries taking up 28 nanometer uh, orders from guys like not just AMD but MediaTek and others. So that's relieving some of the pressure on TSMC. Samsung is also opening up uh, a lot more of their fabs. Uh, we haven't heard any major amount announcements about uh, you know any graphics maker going with uh, Samsung, but I'm pretty sure a lot of other you know SOC makers, uh, the guys who are you know really pushing ARM products, uh, they'll probably be taking up uh, you know a lot of orders and extra space on these, so it could potentially relieve some of the pressure on TSMC, <coughs> excuse me, and their 28 nanometer process. Um, that being said, Nvidia is a big customer of TSMC. They're a very important customer of that company. And I think that they do a lot of things to kind of bend over backwards to make sure that NVIDIA stays as one of their leading and cutting-edge partners because as soon as a new process node rolls out, NVIDIA is right there and ready to throw in money to you know get some, some risk production going to make sure that they get their next generation of products out before AMD. And so I don't think NVIDIA is going to have much of a problem uh, getting wafer orders in for this particular part. Again, it's a very mature process. The design software is, uh, I mean, it's well optimized for what they're doing. They know all the tips and tricks after having, what, essentially uh, three generations of parts. I wouldn't say exactly three generations of parts. I mean, two generations were kind of a rebrand, but uh, the Maxwell... Well, uh, Go ahead. If you go for the uh, first and second generation Kepler and also GK110, I mean, yeah. if you count those subgenerations, there's a bunch of them that came through 28 nanometer. Yeah, yeah. And so, uh, I mean, they, they are 
they know how to make a big chip on this process node. They know where they can trim stuff off because they've, you know, they've they've taken this uh, first Maxwell parts with the 750 750 Ti. Uh, so I, I I think it's going to probably be a fairly smooth transition for them going from Kepler to Maxwell with the 880 and the 870. Does that answer your question? Well, Who the hell knows if I'm right? Okay. Uh, it- next thing. Apparently, Alan is at the Flash Memory Summit, and uh, he accidentally thought he was going to the Flash Summit, and it got him really excited. But unfortunately, it's just memory products from his favorite people, Samsung and Toshiba and Intel, Micron. Uh, but he's learned a couple of things. Has anybody read his Samsung announces the 3D TLC VNAND Storage Intelligence Initiative? Anyone? Wow, the volunteers are just ear shattering, aren't they? I know, this is fantastic. So, anyway, <laughs> if you remember a couple of weeks ago, Alan went over the VNAND. It's a vertical stacking on a uh, bigger process node that uh, yields a lot of positives. I mean, it's, it's kind of a new and different way of doing NAND uh, stacked vertically in these cells. And they're going to start doing TLC, so triple level uh, or Triple level cache? Is that what it is? Triple level cell. Triple M- Non-volatile yeah. memory. Yes, it's too many acronyms. Yet again, uh, essentially, the current 840 Evo series uses the current planar TLC NAND. Uh, you have better density per you know for the die size, but you tend to wear out quicker. Well, apparently TLC and this VNAND is really just kind of meant to be together. People are already talking about the uh, 850 Evo series that has not been announced, but they're assuming will be. So it'll give us relatively inexpensive and <laughs> very, very fast memory that is still controlled by the new 850 controller that uh, Samsung has developed. Certainly, Samsung is is really above the curve here of the other guys. I mean, it's kind of like... Intel with the XM25 product. Is that correct? XM25? Yeah, it is. <sighs> More freaking model XM25 numbers. But yeah, the first 80 gig SSD that blew everything else out of the water. The and, uh, 25M, yeah. 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 Man leg. <laughs> um, but the other thing this there, there, does is it sorts your fire trucks. I, one of the interesting things I think that Alan took out of this, and I certainly thought was interesting, and Scott and he had a quick discussion about with us storage intelligence. So as opposed to an SSD where it just usually dumps the, your, uh, the next bit of information into the n- fastest available spot, which doesn't necessarily do fragmentation the way it does on a hard drive, still from what they're saying, they've figured out a way where they're going to group it together, and they're at least touting significant uh, IOPS increase while at the same time decreasing the IOs because it's not moving stuff around as much on the disk and then giving it to the computer. So their claims are, well, I mean, hey, they, they could be right. You can't say they're not until we see it. But, I mean, they're seeing some, they're, or sorry, they're claiming to see some huge benefits to this. So it's going to be interesting to see if this storage intelligence of grouping data together on an SSD actually has a lot of real-world applications or if it's just going to sort of show up in high Q density applications where it's doing the same thing over and over again a lot. But it's the first that I've ever heard of an SSD controller trying to do this sort of thing. So it, it's going to be interesting to see. And if they're right, garbage collection, eh, garbage collection will go way down, which means the NAND life should go way up. Which well, for even uh, so, though, Jeremy, 3D. the NAND life on, on, a, on those 3D NANDs are, is huge anyway. I mean, yeah. uh, yeah. what was it? The pro, Alan was saying, was what, like 100 times? Isn't the that right the one with the 10-year warranty? Yes. Correct. Well, that yeah. was a pro, I think. I, I don't know, pro, you yeah. know. Who knows this one? But. Well, th- there's not one yet. There's no Evo or anything announced yet. Um, yeah. Although this is the last hurdle for them to make one, so... Yeah, but but is, is, this is different. This is different now. I mean, this is TLC versus what the Pro has. So yeah. you know, we don't. Yeah. Correct. So uh, I mean, we may see again the the physics behind the VNAND 
and a, a the typical planer is significantly different. So it's going to be interesting to see if if having a TLC type structure negatively affects the right endurance of these products. So I I can't wait to hear more from Alan. He might be able to tell us right now, but of course he's still wandering around taking pictures and eating gelato. And, and not having Wi Fi. Yeah, not having Wi I'm I don't have any Wi Fi guys. I'm sorry I can't join you. I'm in San Francisco. <sighs> Jeez. Anyway, uh, back on to Flying Monster Spaghetti 2014. Marvell announces the new. I love, I love product names. 88 SS 1093E. No wait, 1093 PCIe SSD controllers. This is a brand new four-lane PCIe 3.0 Express controller. So it's just smoking fast. That's like four gigabytes per second. Mm-hmm. That it can that it can do throughput on, and uh, it's got a triple processor, uh, well, a three core processor in the design. I have no idea what kind of TDP that monster throws off, but uh, this kind of is the next generation of uh, PCIe controllers that are coming out. Anybody else get anything else out of? Are we seeing any PCI uh, ESSD controllers that require external power, or they're all able to draw that like 25 watts they have off of the bus? I've only seen bus powered ones. Yeah, so have yeah, I. No, they, but, I mean, when you start doing well, this, <laughs> well, it, it depends if they're if they're an external if they're in an external enclosure, like a normal uh, 2.5 inch drive. Yeah, 2.5 inch form factor. Is that a seven whatever? But they're not PCIe. They'll, they'll, they'll need a, PCIe they'll need an external power probably. If they're if they're just a blank M.2 card, then they'll draw the power off the bus because it's just a naked PCB at that point. The interesting thing about this Marvell controller is whether or not we'll actually see physical dr- uh, drive type uh, devices, ha- or not drive, but um, you know the uh, enclosed drive type devices. Oh, I'm using this because uh, State Express would not even begin to saturate it. State Express is only uh, barely or a little over double of uh, SATA six, where this thing could do easily four times that. I mean, it would not four, but more, much more. I mean, with an M over an M dot two that actually uh, had four uh, X uh, PCIe lanes, yeah, you could do some serious damage with this thing. Yeah, they're talking M2 and 2.5 inch slim fa- form yeah. factor. Yeah, but and the 2.5 no, inch slim in form addition. factors, you're not gonna, you're not gonna see. I mean, it's not gonna tap the potential of the thing probably. Hmm. Well, we need a new storage. SATA. What's that? We need a new SATA. Already. We do have it. It's called SATA Express. It's called SCSI. And we need another one. Sex. Well, I mean, that's what SATA kind of originally was. Yeah. Is uh, it has a lot of it, you know back in the days of parallel IDE, SATA integrated in a bunch of SCSI type features that made it you know more reliable, supposedly more dependable. Um, that's why you had one device per stinking channel instead of like ID had the two and. Yeah. You never wanted to copy from one hard drive to another if they're on the same stinking IDE channel. Um, so it's nice that, uh, you know. Which is funny because wasn't that the point of having them on the same channel is to make the copies between them a lot a lot uh, quicker because you wouldn't have to go through the motherboard and back out again? Oh, wasn't that no, the point? It, 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 no, it had, to, it had to go down to the mother con- controller and back, back up. up. It was just, it yeah. It was horrendous. You, oh, oh, I do not miss... Do not miss IDE one bit. So, uh, next, uh, HGST claims 3 million IOPS and 1.5 microsecond access time SSD. I did not read this one, of course. Why? Because I'm an idiot. So, uh, basically, this is the first introduction, uh, not as a product, but as a demo at the uh, Flash Memory Summit um, of phase change memory, which is uh, supposedly classified as a memristor. So it's going to have... Uh, first off, it's litho- uh, lithoed at a significantly larger um, um, fabrication process. It's actually like 45 nanometers, which is a while ago, but again, they're not comparable because it's completely different from the end in how the uh, actual um, 
circuit works. Uh, but I mean, they're talking about ridiculous um, access times. There are, might be some downsides we're not talking about, but um, I'll get to those in a second. But for instance, the latest uh, Intel SSD that Alan was all kind of being like, oh, this is the fastest SSD. It's a PCI Express one from Intel. Um, it's uh, what it's a benchmark for all enterprise drives and on the graph was going way above everyone else. Um, that was 250,000 IOPS per second, and this is 3 million. So um, we're talking about a factor of about 12 over that, which, again, prototype, who knows. Um, <coughs> but they're actually going to be uh, demonstrating it at the Flash Memory Summit. The part that concerns me, though, is that their talk, and again, I'm not quite sure if it's uh, apples and orange comparison, but they're talking about the chips being uh, one gigabit flash. And I think the going rate right now is between, you know, 80 to 100 gigabits per chip. So I'm not sure how much storage you're actually going to get on the entire card if it actually does come out, or on the entire uh, product if it actually does come out. Because when you're going to a factor of 100 less, isn't that starting to reach memory? Like, volatile memory uh, densities? Limits. Although they claim it's very dense, so I'm not sure if I'm just not missing, like getting something. Like maybe well, no, they're saying like one gig per chip. One gig yeah, per what? chip is kind of slow, or is kind of low, rather. That's what I'm saying. Like, isn't it supposed to be 128 about now for uh, 20 nanometer uh, flash, like from Intel, let's say? So that's a factor of 100 lower. I'm not sure if there's something compensating, like maybe the chips are just horrendously small, or like very, very small, so they can fit a lot more on the board or something, but... It just seems very odd of a change, so. Yeah, well, Memristor is is supposedly giving, like, DDR3 RAM, you know, the, the that type of memory, yep. but with the ability to, you know, store a charge. Yep. But, so your access times are going to be obviously a lot lower than having to go through slower NAND. Uh, and this, again, is just the physical properties of a Memristor. I don't even think it holds it stores charge. I think it just changes uh, resistance. Although maybe it does okay. that by storing a charge. I cannot well. remember. I mean, I've read about memristors and <laughs> for over the last decade. <laughs> yeah, it's all over my head. I'm not a very smart guy. I don't know why you guys have me talk at all. No, I just mean we've been promised them for so bloody long. We have. Yeah, I think same, the, yeah. ori- the original theoretical <laughs> 2011 talk- is the earliest I'm seeing on a, just a quick search here. No, there's something oh, like oh, was, <clears throat> 1972 was when well, yeah. the first theory of memristors it was like 68 or 72 was put forward by I don't know some guy that worked some at university guy Lockheed yeah. and, yeah. yes. and uh, we've that never had the technology to really do it. Yeah. No, HP and, is second uh, 2016. And, uh, yeah. See, there's that latency again. Yep. We're all talking over all of each other. I wish Ken could be stoplight lady. Maybe we should go like you know one of the uh, one of the uh, Brazilian steakhouses when we t- want to talk. We hold up the green sign. When we're fine. We'll just do the red. Then Scott will start saying, "Feed me the meat," and it's going to go downhill from there. Correct. Yes. Uh, so anyway, let's let's run on to the next thing. Uh, MSI. They apparently do not believe in NDAs. They they hate them, and they made a mistake and posted some pictures of the X99S SLI Plus motherboard on Facebook and Twitter. But, of course, you know, when, when that happened on Facebook, it was when Facebook went down, and Twitter and all the other social networks almost went into meltdown. Uh, Maury, including 911, because people were literally calling 911 because Facebook wasn't working. Yeah, that was kind of funny. Kind of sad, eh? Kind of sad. Well, uh, um, then that guy who said that was also being investigated for making false claims. <laughs> so, <laughs> so everything. Um, I mean, everything I know about the X ninety nine is hearsay for now. I mean, literally, you know, it's 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 the well. The one thing I do know it's the um, it's the what the. Uh, Predis- no, not the predecessor. It's the um, it's evolution of the X58 chipset. Uh, it's going to use the. Uh, I don't know what the socket on it is. It's a different socket than X58, so you have to buy a new 
you know, a new uh, new CPU for that. It'll be Haswell based. It has well e-based, sorry. So it'll be very power efficient. It's gonna, you know, have uh, quad channel memory. Um, that one, the board you're seeing there, it. I don't know what the, you know. Again, I don't know anything about the board makeup really, besides what you can see. Um, but it doesn't look like it's got a uh, bridge chip on it, so I don't know if it supports more than two-way SLI or. Uh, crossfire uh, it looks there. like it's it's uh, definitely three-way sli and i can see all the the uh, splitter chips in between the uh first and second pci express and it claims uh, so, four by 16s you know, what, yeah, yeah it's it's claim four by 16s. but, but can, can the uh, uh see i don't know i mean i don't know if the x99 can actually handle that without a bridge chip or not well i know the z97 it, can't but uh well but, i mean it, does it, it, the, that's we, the big question is does the x99 have enough internal PCIe lanes to, to be able to handle uh, quad SLI or quad crossfire without a bridge chip. If we think about it, X79 had, what was it, 40 lanes of PCIe? 40, yeah. So I don't think they'll take that big of a step. And it looks like you can see some ICs there that are doing bridge-type sure operations. Yeah, that's but if, not if bridge. It, it splits the, yeah. the 16 into 2 by 8 yeah. So the first and second, when you have them, you know, when you have a, a triple SLI or triple crossfire, it's going to be 8, 8, 16. If you just do the first and the third, it's going to be 16, 16. Clear yeah, as what mud? They could, what, what they could have done, let's say the x 9 supports uh, 48. You know, let's say it just is a little bit of a bump over the X79. Let's say it has 48 PCIe lanes. That what they could do for uh, triple crossfire is they could start disabling things on a board. We've seen that with the Z79. Z, no, sorry, Z97. God, I don't know why I did that. Um, where, you know, you if you want to enable, you know, um, the uh, tertiary PCIe, PCI Express X16 slot in 4X, or 4X mode, it'll start disabling USB. It'll disable, you know, some of the X1 ports. You know, we could see the same thing on this board. But again, this is all speculation. Because yeah, until the NDA is lifted or MSI decides to post stuff, which they More probably specs. will. Mm -hmm. So, Jeremy, do you like old games? Uh, well, it, it's not old if it's younger than I am, right? Yeah, but that's that's like saying the, hey, that uh, you and Maury are still young spring chickens. I know. You know, Vax Star Trek was still new when I was born. So I, I that was the first, could that was have the first. played E.T. if I really wanted to. Yeah, well, I you know, didn't. that Star Trek game was the first one I ever played. I was like six years old, and uh, my family, uh, not my family, but like the bigger family that I'm from, they owned a, a grain elevator up in Bridger, Montana, and they had a microcomputer there. And my brothers and I went up there and... Uh, they're like, here, try this out. And they pulled out one of those huge discs like this and loaded up. And it was, a, it was a Word Star Trek game. And it had the little grid about where you were and how many stars were in a cluster and if there mm. were Klingons. Mm -hmm. And you had to, we got our yep. butts handed to us. But yeah, that was, that was like in 1978. Fun times. That was my first yeah. video game. That was back in the days when you could accidentally put a data tape into your uh, into your stereo and scream as you had to turn it off because that was not a pleasant sound. No, no, it is no, not. It was not. But anyway, but anyways, back, Wing back Commander Three. If you, you do not already own a copy of this from when Good Old Games gave it away for free, you can now get it from Origin because hey, Origin is occasionally good for something. Now, if you're wondering why the hell would I even want to think about Wing Commander Three. This is one of the first games that had a proper orchestral score. It used full motion video as opposed to cut scenes that were pixelacious. All uh, your face are starring to us. Mark Hamill before he started to get older. Because uh, <laughs> he's not aged as well as some of us have. Let's put it that way. But now it is fun. Yeah. Yes, Josh. No, that was, that was Scott. Hello. 
<laughs> I said now he's a Skywalker, but uh, the joke kind of rolled past, so it was kind of just... Yeah. Well, did you see him in that one movie with uh, the zip lines and the uh, air ships that were just wooden frame gliders? That was about when he started to get a little bit old. But uh, And now I'll make some exceptions for some of you young kids that are going to fire this up because it was free, so I've not done nothing but steal a couple of minutes of your time. If you are unable to handle the fact that 640 by 480 was an unreachable resolution at that point, there is another link we've provided, which is for Wing Commander Saga. Now, this was a remake, uh, which encompasses the exact same campaign as Wing Commander 3, just starts a little bit earlier, ends a little bit later, and you only see a little bit of the Mark Hamill stuff, but they did make some of their own full motion video. This one does handle more modern resolutions and like most of the games back in those days, didn't want you to win. You you don't just get to say, okay, well this is hard, I'm going to turn the difficulty down and press X to finish. No, you're you're actually going to work your ass off a little bit on some of these. But hey, it is so worth it and you, you, you can think of what it was like back in the days when Josh, Maury, and I were young. And had hair. I played Wing Commander. Not three, I played Privateer. But yeah, well, yeah Privateer wasn't hair. so bad. Yeah. Anyway, uh, you know what? That is the news and reviews that we have for you guys. I don't know how we spread it out to almost an hour. It was a struggle, but we did. Maybe Ryan should give us a race. Yeah? No? Anyway. So on to Hardware Software Picks of the Week. Ryan, what is Ryan like? Obviously, Jeremy, what is he like? Well, he he went to Portland where I hear the soccer moms are just fine. They are just fine. I guess the tickets to that thing were a couple hundred bucks a piece, but you know what? No wonder we're not getting paid. It was worth it for all those moms in yoga pants watching soccer. <sighs> mm-hmm. Yeah, Josh, some of those moms in yoga pants shouldn't be wearing them, though. Trust me. Yeah, but it's what, Portland? Yeah. And besides, the the owner of that company got in trouble for saying that, so we don't want to have to replace him, Maury. Okay. So, Jeremy, what is your pick? Uh, I'm going to carry on with the old school games, except this time it is an old school game which is now running fully natively on ARM. It would be the original StarCraft. And this is pretty damn neat in that this is a full and complete conversion. This is not running on an emulator. He recompiled it. It is now running natively on an arm on a very what well, open Pandora, which is not something many people use, but the fact that it can run on an arm means that it can run on an arm. So you can expect to see this happening more as we start to see ARM becoming a more viable platform for regular use. It's neat to see that there's already a community de- devoted to this, and as ARM starts getting much much better processors out there, it's going to be interesting to see what the modding community does as far as native uh, running on ARM does. I'm, I'm kind of looking forward to see this. Do- Doom's besides, next. Tablet, I knew Starcraft. I shouldn't have thrown away. Oh, sorry. Doom's oh, next. I, I knew I shouldn't have thrown away all my Doom mods. Because yeah. you, you could play them on a tablet now. I know. And look, it doesn't have any of the uh, the video corruption uh, in that loading screen that Windows 7 and a modern operating system has with uh, StarCraft. That's annoying, but what it is. Uh, me. I guess it's my turn. RobotCraft. My kids like it. It's free. You can get in right now. It's early access. And uh, you go, you win stuff, you build your robot bigger, Better, harder, stronger, different features and whatnot. It looks pretty good. It's a lot of fun. Again, it's free. My kids like it. It keeps them entertained. And let me tell you, that is worth its weight in gold, which is funny because it's free. And so I there, bet you it's go check it out. Or easier well, to use than Kerbal. I wouldn't doubt if it was. And it's free. Scott, is so, yours free? Mine is not free. Mine is uh, possibly a bit more expensive than I would uh, um, really consider. 
there are some pros and cons to this, but I came across it today. It's the uh, Mad Cat's Strike M wireless uh, keyboard. And what it actually looks to be is, well, to get a scale a for keytar. size. Yeah. To get you a, know, if yeah. you put a hilt on that, it would be like an anime sword. Yeah, I know. Um, to look at its size, actually, that's about like, if you would put your hand on it, it'd probably go about two thirds of the way across it. So it's not exactly the uh, the largest keyboard there is. Apparently, it's designed for. Um, well, it w- works either on a Mac, PC, iOS, Android, uh, Windows Mobile, I believe. They also said it as well in a couple other ones. Uh, so it's a keyboard and mouse combo. Uh, they're talking mostly about using it for home theater PC, or of course, their Mad ca- their Mad Cat's uh, Android console, or probably an Ouya or something else as well. But the thing I find kind of cool about it is because it's so small and uh, has all the mouse, fun- mouse functions on it, it also might be good for someone who's traveling uh, who brings their OUYA or whatever with them, connects it to the hotel TV if they let you. Um, if you can find an extra HDMI port somewhere that's not soldered shut or whatever, um, then you might actually have a decent um, kind of small travel keyboard and mouse for home theater PC usage on the go so if you're someone like ryan who can't seem to stay in the same town for two weeks um then it might be good to uh use in various hotels can you stay your girlfriend with it yes no maybe what's that can you stab your girlfriend with it um i don't think legally you can okay so legally no yes in canada we even have laws against keytars that's good. How about platypuses? Those things will poison you, man. Yeah. They're vicious. Venom. Back of the legs. Maury, yep. tell us what you got. And it's not venom coming out of the back of your legs. I hope. No, it's not venom coming out of the back of my legs. I well I just uh right before QuakeCon I upgraded my water block. I got one of the new Swift Tech Apogee XL blocks. It's a very nice block. It um it has inbuilt it's um they basically took the H D design tweaked a little bit and improved the uh, flow through it um it's uh it's basically got inbuilt leads as well and it comes with four different colored plates you can put behind the uh, basically that uh you can see the um the top uh the top is actually removable it's held on by uh four push pins you can remove those remove the uh remove the face plate and underneath there's colored blocks you put over the leads to change the led color so um, it's a very nice block. It works really well. Um, expect, you know, next uh, probably over the next month or something. I'm not going to do a review on that block itself probably, but there will be some kind of um, review, you know, a um, kind of a comparison between that block and other blocks. Because I got a bunch of water blocks sitting on my shelf. That I'm going to do uh, some kind of comparison review to get some numbers around you know who uh what blocks do better under certain circumstances and such um because in one of the more recent water cooling reviews uh when we when I did the photon review I actually saw some odd behavior with the ra- uh with the um the rainstorm block where it didn't perform as well with a bigger radiator as as well as I expected with the bigger radiator um which led me to speculate that there was you know I was actually hitting a the thermal wall with that so you know I'm going to throw some other blocks in with that system and you know, see what shakes out. Have you ever been tempted just to take two water blocks and stick them together and see which one pulls more heat from each other? Uh, <laughs> yeah, that wouldn't do anything. That yeah, no. you'd, <laughs> that, that you just uh, cool probably room temperature. Yeah, have sorry. Male mismatch kind of mm, cause no. corrosion. Yeah. Eventually, they'd just stick together and you'd never break them apart and you'd start the na- latest ice age. Way to go, Scott. Way to ruin <laughs> us all. Anyway, uh, you know what? That's our show. Uh, you can watch this abomination again at pcper.com slash podcast. You can read further abominations at twitter.com slash Ryan Trout or twitter.com slash pcper. I believe that Maury, Jeremy, and myself are all on there. But you know what? It's up to you to find us because we don't like to be found, mainly because two out of three don't have hair. But anyway, with that, I know we didn't do introductions before, but we'll do them now. So good night, and I'm Josh Walrath. I'm Jeremy Hallstrom. I'm Scott Michaud. 
And I'm Mario Tattleman. Y'all have a good night now. And Ryan and Al are slackers. <laughs> <laughs>